A wood turner can go anywhere to find interesting material. The city dump, your firewood pile, or a backyard where some trees might need to be cleared. Cut your log a little longer than its diameter if you're going to make a bowl right away. But if you're gathering wood to use a little later, cut these longer because the ends will split as they dry. When you're ready to turn, just cut away the dried ends and get back down to a length just a little longer than the diameter. If you split each log through the pith or the center, you'll get two bowl blanks. And you can use these for either natural edge bowls or traditional flat edge bowls. The bowl blank goes face down against the bandsaw table. And I nail on a round plywood template that will guide my bandsaw cut so I'll get a roughly round turning blank. When I remove the template, the nail hole will remain to help locate the center for mounting the blank on the lathe. There's a lot of bandsaw blade exposed here, so be careful. Keep fingers well away from the blade. Now we're going to switch to faceplate work. We've got us a bowl blank, and to start with, we're going to put it between centers so that we can turn it down to accommodate the chuck that we're going to use. But before we do that, we need to remove the mini spur center we've been using for spindle work. It's not quite heavy enough for what we're about to do. We're going to switch instead to a two-prong spur center, and this will be driven right into the face of the bowl blank. But before we do that, we've got some bark here that we want to remove because it won't support the drive center. We want to get down to real wood. And there we have it. And we're going to use a rubber mallet to drive this in. You never want to use a steel face hammer on your drive centers. It will bludgeon the end and cause it to mess up your Morse taper. So this goes in here. I'm going to bring up the tail stock, lock that in position, and put a little pressure on it. Now before we turn this on, first of all we want to make sure that it's going to clear the, the tool wrist. Make sure that that's clear, but before we start this machine, we've been doing spindle work and we want to reduce the speed for the faceplate work. We're going to reduce it down to about 500 RPMs, which is the minimum speed, and that's just done by moving the belts over to the slow speed pulleys, where we have the large pulley at the top and the small pulley at the bottom. All right, we'll plug the machine back in, and we're set to go. We're going to use the deep fluted bowl gouge now to turn our bowl, and it's a little bit different than the spindle gouge that we used earlier on our honey dipper. It has a deep flute and a much shorter bevel, which puts more material under the cutting edge to support the cut. The spindle gouge has a long bevel and is great for details, and we're going to use that to detail our tenon to go in the chuck. Now, I like to wear a face shield when I'm doing larger pieces and roughing them out. This will keep the bark from coming off and hitting me. It's always a good idea to stand to one side when you turn it on the first time, just to make sure that it's clear, clear and free. And we're ready to cut. Again, just put the tool on the rest and ease into the surface. Very gently at first, this piece is not round. Keep the tool handle up against your body. And you want to engage the bevel. Just tighten that up just a little bit. And we go ahead and start shaping our piece. It'll become round as we go. There's no point in rounding it all out. This end is going to be the bottom of the bowl.
Don't try to take too much material at one time. You can always go back and take a little bit more off. All we want to do now is get it round and balanced. You can hear the flat of the bandsaw cut still slapping against the gouge. And let's just stop it and take a look. We're going to move the tool rest around a little bit closer. Always move the tool rest as close as possible when you can. The farther you are out over the tool rest, the less control you have. So now we can come back here and take a little bit more off of here. And use your whole body to move. Don't just try to do it with your hands. You have a lot more support with the tool handle held against your body. Turning green wood is a real pleasure because the wood is so much easier to cut than seasoned wood. It's not brittle. It's self-lubricating because over half of it's water. You can even get a shower while you work. Instead of wood dust, you get these long, soft, curly shavings. Of course, you'll have to wait till it dries before you sand and finish it. Stop once again. And we're going to come around and start shaping the top. And I'm going to change direction on my cut now. As I'm cutting towards the bark, I'm beginning to get a little tear out. So I'm going to come up to the top edge of what's going to become the top of the bowl and I'm going to cut back into it to pull it back into the material. This is a blind cut. You can't really see what you're doing so you have to move very slowly and very carefully starting outside the top rim and then just gently cutting into it. Once you're close, it's not a bad idea to just to stop it and just check our shape. We've got an obvious ridge here, and we need to come back and blend these two curves together. And a few light cuts just to blend the surfaces together. And we'll probably have to come back later and do a final cut after we turn it around. Okay, now we're going to stop it again and move the tool rest. We're going to identify the bottom and make a cut to allow us to put the chuck onto the blank. We want to make the bottom of the bowl totally separate from the chuck. This way you don't have to deal with the chuck and how it was attached after the fact. Chuck's going to go down here and we need to switch tools and this will allow us to come in and make a real fine cut. We need a good clean square edge for the chuck to hold tightly. It's not the depth of the tenon that gives you the holding power. It's this square edge right here, the 90 degrees or more that pull it together.